Hey folks, I've got two Crescent kayaks here uh, that I'd like to, to motorize with the Torquedo Ultralight. And there's a little bit of a barrier because there's no four bolt pattern as we see on a lot of other boats. Um, you know, that, that have that four bolt pattern of inserts uh, to get this, these four bolts in here. So this is ultimately what I'm looking to do is to get that Torquedo mount on there. And in order to do it, uh, I'm going to create a mounting surface um, with a material called starboard. Um, it, it's kind of the same stuff as a, the cutting board here. Um, I've used this, this material before. Uh, just ordered on Amazon. I'll show you real quick what the, the um, search that I used. I typed in starboard marine board half as in, as in it's a the half inch thick stuff um, and basically it's also goes by marine board high density polyethylene plastic sheeting uh, there's, there's a lot of different different stuff in there that you can choose from um, but for the purposes of just I want to I want to just get this done today um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these handles off and we have the um, these quarter 20 stainless steel uh, hardware here. Then I'm going to pull this off. <clears throat> and we're actually going <laughs> to we're going to run to Walmart because I think what I'm going to do is uh, is hack up my wife's um, old one. We'll, we'll make use of this one. Um, and we're going to slap that on there. We'll go to Walmart and I'm going to give my wife a new cutting board um, and retire this one. But this one has the width. You do want to measure the width between the insert, inserts and we got eh, about 13 and a quarter inches. And right here I got 14 and a half inches to work with. So I will use this cutting board uh, as my mounting surface for the Torquedo Ultralight to motorize this Crescent Crew. Uh, we also have a light tackle back here. It's a little bit wider, and in order to do that one, I think I'd need it. Eh, it might actually work with that 14 in a little bit, but I'm just going to do the crew. And then when I'm done with, with showing you how to do this, uh, we're going to go over and see Trey Leach, and he's going to show you uh, what he does to make custom quarter inch aluminum adapter plates. Um, but I did want to. to you know, if you want to DIY it for yourself instead of purchasing one that's custom, um, just show you that process. So we'll start with, um, I, I made sure that I got the right length um, stainless steel quarter 20 bolts and I've actually taken this inch and a half um, and the the starboard is actually I've used this stuff before. This is an older piece that I that I used to make custom mount. I can't remember what it was on. It's the, it's the same material that is used in the the black pack right there, the Yakutek black pack. That's a thinner one. I think that's quarter, and I think this is half. So this isn't quite half, but I think it'll it'll suffice. Uh, but I tested the length. You know, put the bolt through there. I'm actually going to reuse the the handles. So I'll put the handles here on top just to make sure and and I'll cut out a portion so you're not trying to get in get your hands in there we'll, we'll probably use a sawzall and a um, and a grinder and uh, I guarantee you my my DIY version won't be as nice as uh, as Trey's aluminum one but it will nonetheless be functional so I'm just checking the depth I, I did this before but i know i know that this is is adequate thread to to get on there uh and <clears throat> to be able to to secure it um i have more hardware in the way of um when i drill holes in this for for this mount to sit here to secure this to it although the torpedo actually comes with a mounting hardware so you shouldn't have to buy any additional for that only um, you have to get the right length, quarter 20, to make up the difference between elevating with 
the right thickness of um, of starboard. So, so I will. Uh, you know, we're going to take measurements and and basically uh, put this on there, mark what we're going to cut up, and um, put it on the grinder. But in the meantime, I am going to run to. Uh, to Walmart and pick up a fresh cutting board for my wife so when she's you know cutting up her veggies this afternoon she's got something to work with and isn't asking where her cutter cutting board is so let's do that first hope she likes it all right I'm gonna get the the handles off there so I can have the cutting board lay on there flat and I can Kind of mark out where I want the mount mounting bracket on there. Drill some holes. Kind of rough out a, a shape. I'm gonna keep that handle part of it there and uh, see what. See how this hangs off the back. Roughly there and here. Yep. <clears throat> Same thing on the other side. Roughly there and there. Now, if you if you do have a a kayak that isn't doesn't have four contact points and you need to build up one of them, one trick you can do is to use a little bit of one inch PVC pipe and put it there as a spacer. For instance, your your contact point and you want to keep it flat is uh, is lower at the back. Uh, you can you can definitely cut a little quarter inch PVC pipe to get it up. You also do that if you have rudder lines coming out underneath the plate and you're going to connect the steering triangle further back. So quarter inch uh, or you know quarter inch board, although this is thinner, um, plus half inch PVC tubing that you cut into little sections as spacers might be something that that makes sense um, based on the geometry of the boat you're working with. And if I was really exact about this, I'd put it in a vise and actually measure with a straight edge, but I'm not doing that. I'll be the first to admit I'm not a, uh, a very exacting fabricator. I'm just a, a person doing a little DIY, which kind of proves the point. Anyone can do this. Um, but we're going to see in a little while how a professional actually does this. And uh, Trey's going to make it out of quarter inch aluminum and it will be exact and threaded but you get the concept I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one up and uh, we'll see how that goes uh, I'm gonna get this handle on there and then we're gonna take the sharpie and kind of <clears throat> lay the uh, lay the mount on there Put some mounting, uh, you know, put some holes, well, put some marks on there where I'm going to drill out holes for the, um, the mounting bracket here. Go ahead and drill those out. Make sure that I have clearance underneath that I'm not, yeah, I can go actually pretty far back. And then make sure it's centered. It's on there straight. So there's a lot of structural integrity that, that comes into contact with the hull, the cutting board in contact with the hull in this area. Um, so I don't want to compromise that, yet I do want to get my hand under there to get this handle. So 
I think a lot of this and a lot of this I'm leaving alone, but right here I can, let's see, I can cut away that and cut away as far as that and then, yep, that's going to work there and then I'll just do the same sort of thing on the other side. Let's get that other handle on there to just get a visual representation of what we're doing. Coming in here, this big open area, come back this way, cut this, and I think we're going to want to just wrap it around, come back this way, just to make it streamlined with the kayak. Yep. Yep, then we got a good mount. If we really wanted to, we could actually use the the board as a handle. And uh, let's see what that looks like. Let's build something in here. Well, let's see. Come in like this. Give it a little bit of a an angle there and uh, uh, give it an opening there. Then you got a third handle. We'll see how that turns out. What we have now is a very roughed out mount that we're going to take over to the grinder. See what kind of smoothing out that we can accomplish. Okay, what we have now is a, not that pretty, but functional mount with room for a handle on either side and, uh, and one in the back. So uh, I may get the Dremel out and just clean up in here just so I have a nicer, nicer place for my fingers to come up through there. But other than, than that, it's, it is functional and uh, it's uh, about ready to put on there. Okay. <clears throat> Starting to look a little bit more respectable. We'll see uh, how this smooths up, this, this handle. Um, <laughs> I get a little bit of sandpaper over it and uh, it's actually gonna feel pretty nice here in a little bit. All right, so before we put this, we mount this to the kayak itself. I have to mount the uh, mounting bracket to the board. I could do it after, but I'm going to go ahead and knock it out now with some nice big washers. Let's see, And uh, then I can put the whole thing on there. All right. Got that on there solidly with those big washers. The only thing really left to do for this part of the installation is to Go ahead and get our handle in there and uh, see how that lays in there. See if that's a comfortable fit. But I think if you look at it, should be plenty of room there. Nice, strong handle I can pick up there. 
and I preserved the other two handles. So, all right, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and get the the motor on there, and then see where we're running our our tubes. Um, I think I'm gonna use the Innovative Sportsman. Uh, foot control steering kit on this particular rig, but it looks like we got a place for the tube to go in there and I gotta put the tracks here instead of these fixed foot pegs um, Yeah, I'll figure out where it comes out next, but we'll get the foot control steering in there and get this uh, this crew out on the water so before we move on to to installing the foot control steering I wanted to point out a torpedo part uh, that could be useful in the case of you're not having any inserts at the back of the the boat say these these inserts for the handle weren't there uh, this is an anchor and a screw that goes with it and torpedo had these as part of the ball mount uh, which was the, the precursor mount to, to this one, the A mount, but basically uh, that anchor would go, you drill a hole, it would go inside there and you use this, this tool to sit down on top of it and as you screw this down into it, it squishes this and draws it up and it stars out on the inside and, and then you have an insert. So. Uh, this is something if you if you look at the Torquedo website, you can find these part, these anchors um, and order them if you need them. Uh, but fortunately for this this setup, I had existing inserts. So okay, let's move on to the steering. Um, I need to run the the tubing through the hull, and if you look at the back here, we have one little little notch here uh, that suggests they know that people are going to do that uh, but as you move forward there's no hatch anywhere um, there's no way to get access to the inside of the boat so um, that's a tough one I've, I've done installs before I did one on a new canoe I've done it on the Jackson you pick where you show where we show how to use P-clips and keep it on the on the outside of the boat. Um, but I'd like it to go inside. And, and I, I have at least half of, you know, the a clean entry. So without access to the inside, this is what the approach I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drill a hole where I think I want it to, um, to come out near the track that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna, one end is gonna be here and the other end is going to be here and what I'm going to do is I have this this fencing wire that I'm threading on here and I'm going to start it I'm going to drill the hole there and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this I'm going to try I'm going to make this rigid by adding the, the fencing wire and you come to the other end and that's more more tube than I actually need apparently but it'll poke out here and I'm gonna feed it through there I tell you it's gonna be a whole lot like um, like trying to you know unlock a car um, you know with a coat hanger which we usually use a coat hanger metal coat hanger for doing this when we can't reach things but this is it's it's like trying to lock a, a car with a coat metal coat hanger except um, you're sort of blind to what you're doing on the inside. So I'm gonna see if this works. If it doesn't work, I will reseal the holes and then just put it on the outside. But let's see if I can get this done without access to the inside of the hull. And, and that's what I'm gonna try and find feeding this in up here. Okay, well, that was 38 minutes of frustration. And uh, it ultimately, when you don't have access to the inside of the hull, it makes things 
I don't want to say impossible, but they're, they're, you know, it, it, I, when I've done this before, I've inserted, I've, I've installed a hatch. I've cut a big hole somewhere in an area. Uh, there might be enough room up at the front, but that doesn't help me with this access here. Um, just need access to the inside to, to put this tubing in. So what we're going to do is go with the, uh, the Gorilla Tape and P-Clip method that I did with the, um, the Jackson U-Pick, the New Canoe Frontier 12. Those are two install videos where you can see that. Um, I'll show you the finished product, uh, but I am going to tie into the inserts. We got inserts here. Uh, every, I think all of these that I've that I've tried to unscrew, there's actually inserts in there, which is good because when I run the tubing along the side, I'll probably tie into that. I don't know where else I'm going to tie in, but if I need to put fresh screws in, I'll just put them into the plastic. So, but for now, I am going to seal this up. I can just squish some uh, some silicone in there to um, to seal it up. Or Okay, so I'm going to drill as few holes as possible. Let me undo this bungee to kind of release some tension there. Um, we'll see if this is a, an insert or just a hole. Yeah, that one's just a hole. So. What I'm going to do, put that P-clip right there. We're going to flare out the end of this. Just so it doesn't pull through. And once it's, it's in place, put the p-clip on and put that piece of hardware back where it was but we're gonna slide that p-clip underneath it and that's fairly close to where we were thinking of coming out so We'll get good steering out of it. It just won't be as clean as if it were through the hull. Okay, that's a start. We're gonna move in this direction, see where else we can put this tubing. Coming forward, I will get my, my Gorilla Tape to kinda keep that in place, but we got another, another spot there and I think I actually looked at this one and it had an insert so we will we'll get our p-clip on there snap that on there all right I'm just finishing up the uh, the last little little screw up here um, I've I've mushroomed out the end of the tube. I got the P-clip on there. I drilled a hole in there and uh, we're just finishing that off. And the tubing is a little bit loose until I tighten it down, but even as it goes backwards, it's, it's loose. Um, and I will use a little bit of, it's actually on there pretty tight right there. Um, I use a little bit of Gorilla Tape along the length in a couple places just to just to make sure that that nothing catches on it and tries to to tug on it and pull it out of where it's laying. You just you want it to be nice and uh, protected. So I'll do that along the length of it. And then we'll be ready to put the sliding foot pegs on and 
run the spectra cord through there. All right, I've finished rigging this boat except for one thing and I didn't have all the parts that I needed. What I was lacking was this right here. This is the uh, Sealek Design recreational uh, foot brace with, uh, with rudder control, basically. I took the, the ones that didn't move off of there, out of the inserts there and there, and we're gonna put these on instead. So, just take the hardware that was there and just stick those on, put the slides in and I'm good to go. I will point out that in order to, to get these tracks on there, uh, this is what I took off. It was a thicker piece than what you're putting on. So I had to go from these longer stainless steel quarter 20s to, to these short ones, just so that, that the head doesn't stick out that far in the track and basically prevent this from sliding back and forth because it would hit the head. Hopefully that made sense. That's what was in there, and that's what you need to change to when you put the track on instead of the, the static um, foot peg. Um, I finished putting the uh, the spectra cord there through there, and that'll I'll just put through that little hole there. Um, got my Yak Attack Torquedo throttle mount on there with the four inch section of gear track. Uh, put the the motor lift uh, cleat right there, and I think I just have the, the other one just loose. Uh, that's just for the reverse lock, which I don't have in there. But put some extra gear track. I don't know what I'm going to use that one for, but gear track's always good to have lots of in different places. So once that's on there and i'll go ahead and put it on there um we'll get it out here on uh, lake marburg up in pennsylvania give it a run see what kind of speeds we get one other little detail on putting on the the sliding foot pegs is once i got it in there i realized that we were hitting the hardware here so i'm gonna go ahead and take that out and uh maybe Maybe it's in the lower position. Nope, it's still gonna hit it. I'm just gonna remove the cup holder bungee and, um, you know, just be happy I got, you know, foot control steering set up on there, ready to go. Okay, there it is all set up. I can tell you right now, we don't have it all the way down. We got a little bit more to go. Uh, but that that prop is close so I got a little bit more room to go but I think once I sit in it it's gonna it'll go from sticking out to below the surface hopefully it's enough uh, with my weight so we'll see let's go get a top end speed I will point out something um, I forgot my my kill switch when I set this boat up and I do have a spare magnet that I keep in the bed of the truck uh, it, it just sticks to the inside of that so that is saving me for today not having a kill switch just getting that that little store-bought magnet and sticking it on there for the time being you can generally pick one up at um, in the hardware section of Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever hardware store you have they have those little trays that pull out that has all the specialty pieces usually they have the uh, magnets there so Let's get this in the water, give it a go. So I'm using the 403. I'll tell you, I had to, to actually move, pitch these and slide them back so they're somewhere in the middle of the track, which is unusual for me. Usually I get it all the way up to the tip with my long legs, but it's a little bit different um, sort of geometry of this, this boat in terms of where your sliding foot pegs are when you're you're the uh, you're the only one in it so let's go ahead and mash this see what kind of speed we get we're uh, we're running into a very slight headwind I'm gonna head over to this uh, to this island here but right off the bat I'm hitting five and a half five six lower 
lower speeds. I was just at two mile an hour at like 23 watts. And that's, that's some of the lowest, that's some of the toughest data to gather to get real uh, steady on it. But at that speed, we have 70 couple miles. So we'll go ahead and crank it back up and uh, get that top end speed again, see what we get. It's pretty calm. It actually, we had a little bit of breeze and then it just laid down for us. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the accuracy of the data we're getting today. And, uh, you know, we're back at, at five and a half. So we'll call that our top end speed, five and a half mile an hour with the ultralight 403 AC. And, uh, We'll go ahead and slap the uh, 1103 on there. Actually, I'm touching 5.6. It just touched it briefly. I'm not going to give it 5.6. It's there for a second and then it backs off. So, 5.5 five consistently. All right, let's try the 1103. All right, the 1103 is set up. I will make note of, of one thing in particular. It's the 403 mount, and I put the 1103 in it, and I know a lot of people will, will be crying foul saying, hey, you told me I couldn't do that. <sighs> you can, but you're gonna break stuff. And I think just for the purposes of, of uh, filming today, I'm doing it, um, but I know that my motor lift, like I'm just really struggling to get that up. I don't think I could get it up all the way without the mechanical advantages of the 1103 lift. Um, the steering triangle, would definitely chew through with repeated steering um, because it doesn't have the reinforced metal. The reverse lock is not functional with the 403 mount, so I don't even I didn't even hook it up. So uh, there are things that would break that that when we designed the 1103 we made more durable. So, but for the pr purposes of just testing this today, I'm going to stick it in there and in in hopefully nothing breaks. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, let's get a top end speed. Blake is nice and calm. We're getting good data today. Let's stomp it. A little bit of cavitation at the beginning. I do have it pretty high in the water, um, but we're we're launching. Get there. And we're at six point eight. Six point eight miles per hour. So I will. With a top end speed of 6.8, that's actually the, that's the third fastest. Uh, the fastest is the Wilderness Systems Attack 140. Uh, then it's the Apex Water, well, the 140 does 7.4. Uh, the Apex Watercraft tier uh, gets 7.2. And this at 6.8, and it's still holding it, uh, is the third fastest. And it's, I think, the least expensive one that I've, I've set up with the 1103. So, um, took some rigging um, but the, the thing that really helps this boat with its speed is that it's fairly lightweight uh, it's it's a nice long boat um, what keeps it lightweight is if you look at the lines of this boat there are it's it's all lines you see in nature at least below the water line you don't see any really hard funky edges that trap water and, and make make you carry water with you it just releases water uh, pretty good back there at the stern. The bow is a little bit high. Um, if I could get a little bit more weight forward in this, I think we might have a 6'9", approaching 7 mile per hour boat. Um, I'll let you look at that. Bow's up there. If I was sitting, say, here instead of as far back as I am, I would get more speed. But 6'8 is, is good. And I think mostly length of boat, um, weight of boat, those two really work in its favor. It's still holding. It's cool. Cool. I get the rest of the. Uh, I'll get the rest of the numbers here. I'll zoom back to the uh, to the launch there, and show you how the the steering looks coming through there, coming across my wake. Um, and we'll get the speed and range numbers. I think it's gonna have some good ones. I think it's gonna be efficient at a lot of different speeds as well. Not just good top end speed, but but um, good efficiency, longer range. That's really what it means. 
uh, you have greater range at your lower speeds when you have an efficient hull. And this one's doing pretty good because it's long and lightweight. All right, I'm here at Innovative Sportsman Shop with Trey, and uh, I'm handing off the the Crescent crew. And I thought, you know, I wanted to do the video to show how someone can DIY it, um, but your design process is a little different, right? Yeah, I'll take some measurements and I'll use CAD drawings to draw it out on the computer. We'll have it CNC cut out of aluminum. Um, and then uh, I have a guy that does that for me and he has a, a metal brake that'll bend metal when I need it bent and the CNC laser that cuts it out to spec. So I can draw it on a computer, send it to him and have it cut out and uh, get a more solid aluminum adapter plate so there's no flex or anything. You can pick it up from the plate and then, uh, you know, real easy install, use the inserts and everything. It'll be nice and clean. Uh, we've got other ones in here in the shop. Uh, Got a nice little project going on right here. My kids are building our deer stand. But uh, we've recently started rearranging the shop and we've got our rack here for our in-stock merchandise. Uh, we have a bunch of different adapter plates. We have the Hobie Pro Angler adapter plate here. Uh, the new canoe adapter plates that, that fit onto the transom. We've got the Vibe Sega or the, um, the Feel Free Lure. And then uh, the Predator 13 right there. We've got some other ones up there along with some rock guard parts that are getting ready to get put together. So um, we try to stock a fair amount of, of what we need. Um, it's kind of a, a process of feeling it out to see what we need. We don't know uh, if we need to carry a bunch of different plates at, a, at different quantities. So it's one thing that we figure out as we go along how many plates we need to keep in stock for each boat and what boats that uh, need the adapter plates. So we're, uh, yeah, we just try to, try to fill the customer's needs is what it is. And we don't want to keep any more in stock than we absolutely have to. Cool. So Trey will be working on one, hopefully that does both the, uh, the crew and the light tackle. You've got them here to develop that, yep. that product. And uh, you know, that's one more that doesn't need to be DIY'd, but if you have a kayak that, uh, that does, I've just showed you how to do it with a cutting board and just a little bit of, um, you know, elbow grease and figuring it out. Yep. So, all right. Thanks, man. Yep.